What is up guys, Fletch here from Ultimate Halo and armor, yes, this stuff, the thing that adds swag to your brag, the thing that gives meaning to your double teaming and the thing that gives peace of mind to your grind. We all know it and Halo wouldn't be the same without it. The player being able to express himself has always been an integral part of the game since day one, no matter how primitive it may have started off. But how is it you should unlock armor in Halo Infinite? There have been so many different ways in the franchise's past that it's a bit tricky to identify which way is truly the best and everybody does have their own preference. So to really get to the bottom of it and for you guys to have your own say, I'm going to fly through exactly how it is you unlock armor in previous Halo games and as a result I want you to comment down below which one you think is your favourite and why. That way we can all let 343 know what we prefer so your voices can be heard and oh yes don't forget this little little thing. Be respectful because everyone has a beautifully different opinion and we're all amazing creatures so I, I would appreciate that so thanks. So in Halo Combat Evolved, well the truthful answer is <laughs> you don't so uh, Halo Combat Evolved was to be honest the baby of the franchise so it keeps the whole thing off. We'll, we'll give it a pass on this one, literally the most you could do is change the colour of your Spartan although I do want to say there was a really deep black that I did really enjoy so but still it was a cool thing for back in the day and it still was a good start in the right direction. Alright so Halo 2. This is where Bungie started to dabble a little bit more. In their follow up title they added the ability to play as the elites which still to this day I'll admit is a contentious topic but there are a loud set of fans who would love to play as them again. It helps machinima creators, people who just want to look like a goofy alien well because. <laughs> but with that said there is a section of the community who doesn't want them back because they do mess with the sandbox in terms of how headshots land and naturally it's a negative thing for the competitive community when balance is such a key factor and they would at least at the very least want them to be in casual slash social game types. As well as this you could still change your colours like in the previous game but now you can change your secondary colour and it was also given the ability to add your emblem onto your Spartan or once again in this instance. At this stage there was no real unlock system but it was a real starting point to where unlocking phases started kicking off. Halo 3, my favourite Halo game, it was a cultural significance and it's the father, son and the holy spirit. I love, love, love how this instalment of the franchise encourages you to perform specific tasks to unlock certain armours. The examples you would see is that you would be able to unlock Scout if you have destroyed a vehicle with three enemies in one online match. To get to ODST you need to become Spartan Graduate Online and to get Katana you need to get 1000 Gamer Score and perhaps probably the hardest was Recon Helmet. This helmet pretty much became a meme eventually, only available when fans were featured on Bungie.net or eventually completed all the Vidmaster achievements which, let me tell you, is, is not an easy feat so well done to you guys who actually did do that back in the day. So you get the idea, Halo 3 had a broad set of ways to make you play the game, whether it was getting a ton of campaign skulls which were needed to get all the game score, do crazy things in multiplayer or do something special in the community. Having a certain helmet kind of had certain bragging rights and you were considered cool I guess you could say, depends who you're asking I suppose, and you had something epic and hard to find. As well as this you still had all of your standard colour configurations for both your Spartan and Elites as well as your own choice of emblem. And don't forget, if it's for the first time, even though you can't see it physically as such, you can choose your own gender, which does affect the voiceover sort of sounds and gameplay. So overall, Halo 3 had some fantastic armour designs and options, but the way it allows you to do it and unlock it all is the most remarkable part, and it gives you real value and achievement, in my opinion. Unlike later Halo titles where there's a lot more grind associated with unlocking armour, but we'll cover that in the next title, which is Halo Reach the Dark Bloody Sheep. Ah yes, Halo Reach. Never have I ever actually seen a, a Halo game with so much depth yet decisiveness all in one go. Don't get me wrong, I love Halo Reach with all of my heart. Forge was great, the campaign was, the multiplayer was... Eh. But the customization in this game was ridiculous. Bungie made it the same and more, allowing you to unlock side pieces to your existing helmets, body armors, wrist, arms, etc. You could add armor effects, firefight voices, knee guards, visor colors, and once again, emblems, of course. You can't forget about those goddamn sexy emblems. I love everything about the customization, but god damn it, I hated the grind. 
I will admit, it's fine early on at first because you're in the honeymoon period with the game where all you want to do is play the game for all that time and then some things you want to buy just get really silly. So, one million. One million dollars. Yes, one million credits for an armor effect. That's right. Oh, you're going the right way for a smack bottom and I don't care who knows it! And don't get me wrong, I understand the rewards aspect, as I discussed earlier, and it's a big thing having the bragging rights associated with it, but for me personally, it didn't make me feel like I wanted to do many different things. Of course, there was the challenges system, which did ask you to do various things, and if you want to hear some awesome examples I made, please feel free to watch my last video, I'm really proud of it. But grinding for credits, I, I would rather stick to my achievements, thank you. Alright, so we're getting there guys, just bear with me, so there's just, just a couple of more to tick off the list. Halo 4, fortunately, had a great campaign, but fans could not foresee that they would not like the multiplayer. Art Style was another pretty big thing with this title, and 343's first foray into the universe. <laughs> I'm going to stop the uh, four jokes in a minute. <laughs> Which had fans and it had its hairs. So the, the multiplayer was decisive. Uh, well, pretty much everything about the game was decisive, but it did a lot of good things in my opinion. But irrespective of that, it did take on board a lot of what Halo Reach tried to do by allowing you to unlock forearms, leg pieces, and doing a lot more in terms of commendations rather than just grinding out specifically with points. Examples of commendation would be kill X amount of crawlers, win X amount of oddball games, or beating a certain mission on a certain difficulty. There is a little bit more resemblance to Halo 3 here, and I think Halo Reach's sort of grindy parts overall didn't make the implementation as much. So I didn't mind the way Halo 4 did it, pretty much. That's what I'm trying to say. As well as that, you could also unlock specializations in the game, which did allow you to unlock certain armors with a skin, which came with a specific perk. So, for example, Waterwork would allow you to move quickly and silently, whilst Pathfinder, on the other hand, made it so that weapons take longer to overheat and move quickly whilst holding turrets. Whether you're a fan of those or not, it's still cool that there was so much to unlock. Alright, so to the preliminary MCC, no worky for me. In all honesty, everything here is there from launch, so you don't really need to unlock anything. You can change your colours and armours and uh, the full sets, by the way, they're not just individual pieces. Uh, because there's so much content in the game as well, so having an unlock system would be a pretty big task and I don't really think it's worth the grind for anybody. So, And of course, you can still choose your emblems and what have you there. But now to the big boy, Halo 5 Guardians. Yes, bronze, silver and gold are your four keys to randomly unlocking armor in this game. And I believe it is the worst system to unlock armor out there. It's not just Halo 5 that's guilty of it. There are plenty of other franchises that do similar practices. Part of the beauty of getting your own armor sets is that you work through the grind or performing a particular task and by doing this it puts pride into the way you play. You want to be able to show off your armor and see people knowing that you can grind out for these points or actually do a certain core cool thing. And now that I, I don't even know what I'm going to get when I open a pack, it kind of hurts. Despite this, there are exceptions. You have Timmy and Olive Helmets, which I believe what it was, you were given 50 hours of custom game time and then you get one of the helmets and, and the other was for having a map featured in matchmaking. As well as these, there was the Helios Grill, which was for completing all games on MCC Solo Legendary. I'm just saying your boy Fletch had a bit of that. And then there was Achilles for being pretty much just sweaty as hell. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much it. I don't really need to go any more detail. So now we've refreshed our memory, let's discuss our thoughts and illustration for how I think Halo Infinite will implement this unlock system. So first of all, I have shown a large preference for Halo 3's method of unlocking things, and I do strongly believe that there is a place for various methods since we've gone through the franchise's history. What I want you to understand what goes in here is I should break down what I should realistically expect how it will be unlocked. Not my ideal dream world, but how I think what's a bit more likely. So what you can expect to see is armor, weapon skins, visor colors, stances, emblems, assassinations, and potentially more announcers, or maybe even other voices you can have for your character in things like Warzone and Arena, much like there is in Halo 5 itself. 
My proposal is simply that we have a healthy mix of ways to unlock items. Now, let's be clear, there is an elephant in the room which I need to address, which yes, is loot boxes. So Chris Lee, the studio head at 343 Industries, a nice guy by the way, got to meet him last year, has said that Halo Infinite will not have any real money loot boxes, which do not mistake my intentions. It's a good thing, but it doesn't mean it's not going to exist within the game's in-game currency. So I'm going to present my most realistic thoughts on how these things can be unlocked, not my unrealistic ideal world scenario. So what would happen is you would play games and you'd receive credits much like Halo Reach. Then with these credits I can either unlock a loot crate or flat out purchase an item from the store. An example would be looking at Apex Legends. There, there are quite a few forms of currencies in the game. Crafting metals unlock cosmetic items, legend tokens unlock legends and store exclusive cosmetics and Apex coins unlock general store items as well. The system works in quite a clever way and it's a business practice that's not just used in video games but also in gambling machines too. So let's say you, Mr. Halo fan, sat right there has 1,200 credits in Halo Infinite. But there's a new weapon skin in the store that costs 1,600. You can either go and play a load more games or you can go to the store and physically buy a fixed set of coins starting out at 1,000. You buy the coins and then you have 600 coins left over. It certainly is no small amount and you have your eye on different items at the same time. So you can either carry on playing the game which boosts the population or you can buy another amount for a set increment and the sort of the cycle continues as such. I believe Halo Infinite will do that and it will allow you to also buy loot boxes in game using such method, using these coins because it leaves the player buying more than they need and they're just short of having another cool item once you've bought this other item. If, if I know that's a really hard thing to illustrate but basically you're always going to have a certain amount of credits, you're never going to be really low or really high so it's going to encourage you to play or buy more, that's basically my point. As well as this, I also do believe that there will be some elements of doing challenges or tasks like Halo 3 harder to unlock armor. So for example, we already know if we reach 152 rank in Halo 5, you will get a little bit of something in Halo Infinite. This has been confirmed by 343 and we're not 100% on what it is and they say it won't be huge but it's a little bit of, to of a token of appreciation for the time that they have put in. So in summary, a mixture between earning points as well as buying items and then being able to flat out buy items in a store like Fortnite or Apex Legends, opening loot boxes and in small part by doing certain challenges. So there we have it, that's what I think Halo Infinite will sort of approach armor customization. I don't want to go too crazy and think what the coolest idea possible is because at the end of it all we have to remember that games are a business and they are there to make money at the end of it all. As long as they do it in an ethical way I don't particularly have a problem with it. But let me know in the comments section below what we'd like to see is an unlock system in Halo Infinite. And if you haven't already hit that subscribe button and I will see you next time on the one and the only Ultimate Halo. Subscribe now to Ultimate Halo for more unfreaking believable Halo content.